Hello everyone. It's been a while since I've done one of these walkthrough videos, but I did want to go over today how to do post-processing of GNSS data with MLID Studio. So we have a couple of the MLID Reach RS units. They're uh, uh, a real-time kinematic or RTK um, GNSS or GPS system that we use to collect really high accuracy, high precision uh, location data for our drone uh, studies. So uh, often we will work with these in uh, RTK mode. So just as a refresher in RTK mode, we have a base station. So one of the REACH RS units is designated as a base. It's set up on a tripod and uh, it doesn't move from the time we turn it on until we're done with our study. And uh, once it uh, gets a location, either a location that you provide it, a known location, or it has a chance to uh, average coordinate readings for uh, quite a decent period of time, usually about 20 to 30 minutes, and then it broadcasts corrections from that uh, location out that are received by the rover, and the rover uh, is the part that you carry around with you to either take your ground control uh, point locations or record other things, or maybe you have a, uh, uh, a rover receiver on your drone that's actually uh, giving you better accuracy for your drone or feeding that corrected coordinate information into your, uh, into your camera. Regardless, the, the rover sort of picks up the signal from the base station and uh, corrects any instantaneous GPS reading that it's getting with information from the base. So it gives you uh, um, much, much higher accuracy than you can get with a single system alone. So that's a, a real-time kinematic setup. Um, and this is a sort of a graphic from MLID. Uh, they do a nice job at sort of explaining the process. And I'd encourage you to take some time and, and visit this website to learn a little bit more about it. Now, we're not always able to achieve real-time uh, corrections in the field. And there can be different reasons for this. You could uh, be farther than your base station can transmit. You could have obstructions that are in the way. There could be any number of reasons that would interrupt either the, the uh, transmission of that signal or the quality of that signal to your between your base and your rover. And so in those cases, we would need to apply those corrections after the fact. And that is called post-process kinematic. And again, this is the MLED's uh, web page on this that gives a good uh, description of this. I just wanted to show the graphics. So for this to work, we have our base station that is running and logging information. And we have our rover unit that is running and logging information. In this graphic, the rover is on a drone. Your rover could be on a survey pole, whatever you want. And then after the fact, we're going to come back into the office and uh, use the log files from the base station and the log files from the rover, bring them into a software application that can uh, smash those two things together and then apply the corrections from the base to the, to the rover and to any other survey uh, uh, points that we would have collected during that time. Okay, so that's the, the overall process. So the application we're going to use for this is uh, one that uh, Emlet has created uh, called Emlet Studio. And uh, you can see the URL for that up here. It's also in the lab document uh, to, to click on that. And, it, and if you come here and uh, click to the bottom, you can download Emlet Studio for Windows or for Mac. So um, if you're following along here, you're going to want to go ahead and do that, get that downloaded, get that installed. And uh, then we're going to switch over to uh, Emlet Studio and then start talking about the files that we're going to need. OK, so for us to do the post-processing in Emlet Studio, we're going to need a couple of things, both from the base station, the, the in this case, the Reach RS unit that was functioning as the base, and the rover unit, so the other Reach RS unit that was operating as a rover. And uh, there's a set of log files that both of those things just sort of record as they're running. Um, and from the base station, we're going to need two of those files. There's this 220 file, which is the, the sort of corrections, the log of the, of the sort of corrections themselves. And you can tell it's from the base because it says reach base right in it. Um, 
and then this 22p file is what we call a navigation file it goes along with that and then this guy here this ubx file this is from the rover and uh, i know it's the rover because it's the other unit that's not the base i guess i could sort of change the name of those units that might make this a little easier to, to figure out but you'll just have to trust me on this now so this is the log file from the rover the other thing that I've got here is this CSV file, and, and so we did a survey with the ReachView units. It's called their survey function. It allows you to collect point locations, so we're using it to tag the locations of our ground control uh, targets. And it will average points together for a specified period of time, and this CSV file, it gives you those sort of averaged values. Um, but uh, it also gives you sort of additional information so that you can actually correct or post-process these uh, locations that you got from your ground control in case you did not have uh, the RTK connection at the time, okay? So, so we're gonna use these files here, um, put a pin in this uh, folder up here, and we'll come back to that uh, in just a little bit. So I'm gonna switch over to Inlet Studio um, and there's a number of things Inlet Studio will do. You can just sort of process a log file from your rover if you want to use it as like a track file. You could use a static um, sort of post-processing. So if, you, if your rover was in a fixed location or if you wanted to really get a good um, you know, location for where your base was, you could do static processing. That's for something that doesn't move. If your rover is mounted to a drone and you want to correct the flight path for the drone, that would be a drone data uh, option. We're going to use this stop and go with reach view, which is the option for correcting these survey CSV files. All right. So I've clicked on that. It wants a few things now. So it wants the uh, um, the log file from the rover. So I'm going to move that out of the way, and I'm just going to drag these guys on there so let me find the log file from the rovers right here okay and it's going to convert that okay it's going to take the antenna height from the csv file which i'm going to give it in a little bit right now it wants the log file from the base so that's this guy right here drop that on okay now so it's going to you can leave these sort of as defaults this is the coordinate from the from the they got from the base file okay we got to give it the antenna height okay so this was a I think it was 1.8 meters and uh, the it was a reach RS RS plus okay and then it figures out okay you, you're measuring from the bottom of the uh, uh, of the unit to the ground that's the 1.8 meters and then it's adding its sort of known amount above that um, okay so I'm going to save that and then uh, we need, it didn't grab the right uh, navigation file here. So let's bring that in. And where did that go? Here we go. Okay, so here's all the files that I need uh, right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit process. Now what process is gonna do is actually apply all the corrections from the base to the rover and it's going to give me a uh, uh, an updated uh, rover file, okay? A rover file, uh, track file from the rover that has all of the corrections applied to it. And uh, notice here, right? It says fix, and it's scrolling through times pretty fast. These are all the readings that it's doing. If you watch this, they're going to switch over to some different values here. It'll be float um, for a second, and these are the different. Uh, position types. There was a float that went by really fast. Okay. Um, okay. So it's corrected the the sort of track file, um, and it's given us this map. And the colors on the map correspond to um, how it was able to do the corrections for every one of the points. And if I if I scroll in here, really 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 close. You can see that this is not a line, it's individual points. So each one of these points corresponds to a reading that the, uh, um, that the rover took, right? And there's a big sort of wad of points right here because that's where we stopped to, uh, to get the measurement for one of our ground control points, okay? 
So uh, we've got fix, which is sort of the highest quality, right? Those are the, the, the highest accuracy, highest precision points that we've got. So we've got fix for just about everything. We do have some single values down here and single corresponds to where it could not get any sort of signal from the base station at all. And that's single because we actually walked under a piece of uh, equipment right there. And then we've got float uh, in, in sort of this portion here until we got a good signal reestablished with the base and then we got uh, fixed signals from, from there on out, okay? So this is just a nice representation of sort of like the overall quality of the, uh, of the result that you're getting from your, from your RTK, uh, or from, in this case, a PPK, post-processed uh, kinematic setup. Okay, so I've got my corrected uh, uh, rover file here. Now I can add my CSV file, uh, the survey file. Okay, um, time zones already set. Uh, this data quality, right? So it's going, we sat in one spot for 30 seconds and, and collected all the readings for 30 seconds. And so it's going to average those values together. But in this case, it's going to use the corrected versions, right? The, of the, uh, from the rover file uh, and average those together. And so it wants to know which of these quality points that I want to use, okay? So I can use fix or float. I'll probably turn float off because we had good fix uh, at, at each of our sites. I might have had a, a little bit of float here at this one spot, but I don't really want to use those. Um, I'd rather use the fixes because I have them there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And that's it. It runs. It's really fast. Uh, we're just, in this case, we had nine ground control points. Um, and it said it was able to do all nine of them using fixed status points, right? So this is my, my locations of all of my corrected ground control points, okay? And uh, just for sort of uh, uh, illustration purposes, I could actually add a layer here and bring in my uncorrected points. And we can see the, the, the difference between the corrected and uncorrected points, okay? So uh, we've got, you know, my, uh, my uncorrected ones are in orange, and my corrected ones are in green, right? So you can see that there's, you know, there's some difference there. If we scroll, we can't really do measurements very well in this, uh, in this thing, but, um, you know, we're on the order of a, of a meter maybe, uh, maybe a little more than a meter sort of displacement between the corrected and uncorrected points, okay? Um, that offset and the direction of that offset is not always consistent, which is sort of why we do this post-processing. So, you know, this guy here is actually more to the east. This point is displaced more to the north, right? So that's the whole point about doing this sort of post-processing is we're removing the, those sort of GPS errors to actually get better, better points all around. Okay, so, uh, so it's corrected this file. It's actually saved the results. It's just another CSV file. Um, and you can just load that CSV file up either into Metashape directly, or you could load it into QGIS or ArcGIS, whatever your favorite flavor of uh, spatial processing program is, and, and work with those corrected uh, points. Okay, so let's go back here, and we're going to do something a little bit different. So. Uh, I'm going to clear all of this out um, so we can start over again, clear that out and that. Okay, so we had a local base station. We had a REACH RS unit at the site that we designated as a base station, and then we had a rover uh, unit as well. What happens if you don't have a base station? You've got a RTK or PPK capable receiver, but you don't have a base station. Well, there are um, uh, reference network sites that we can uh, use to provide that base station information. And so in this case, there was a CORS reference network site. CORS stands for Continuously Operating Reference System. Uh, so there was a CORS network site um, only about five miles away from where we were uh, collecting these points, right? So I got on and uh, you can get onto the website and uh, um, 
download the log files from that cores site and uh, use that information to correct your uh, your rover points. Okay. Um, my personal feeling on this, I don't know a ton about sort of the theory behind it. I don't seem to get quite as good of results using um, those uh, cores reference stations as I do from a local uh, base station. I do know some people that will um, download the cores reference station data, use that to correct their local base station uh, files, and then use that corrected base station file to then correct their rover points. So it's sort of like a three-step process. Um, so that's uh, legitimate as well. Okay, so here's the the files that I've downloaded from the local local sort of nearby cores uh, base station that we're going to use in uh, in Imlid in the in Imlid Studio. So uh, these are a little bit different than what we had before, but the the sort of base file is this 220 file. The navigation file is this 22n file. So those are the two that we're going to use. So uh, I'm going to sort of drag those in. There's my navigation file. There is my base file. And uh, I got to get my rover uh, log file, which is right there. Okay. Um, we could look up what the height of the antenna was uh, at that station and, uh, and add that in. I'm just going to leave that alone for, uh, for right now. Um, and now we can process these points here. Um, it's going to kind of go through. You're going to see as it goes through that we've got more uh, float points uh, correcting with the core station than we do with the, um, with the local base station. There we go. Almost done. There it is. Okay, so remember with the um, with the local base station, right? We had all fixed points, sort of in this southeast corner. We had many more fixed points up here on on this sort of northern end as well. Okay, so um, it's not getting us quite the quality that we got out of the uh, um, out of the local base station. But hey, if you don't have a local base station, it beats nothing, right? It is going to get us uh, quite a bit better results than we could get just with the uh, with the unprocessed or uncorrected uh, points. Okay, so to uh, to go ahead and uh, process our survey file, um, because I don't have any fixed points here, I'm going to have to sort of add in my my float points in that area, so I make sure and get uh, you know a, a good sort of average of points in this area, and then I'll go ahead and process that. And uh, it says nine out of nine points. We're, uh, we're able to be averaged using either float or fix. I've got an orange point here, right, which is designating that that was done with all float points, and then the rest of them were all done with fixed points. So I can add in uh, my uncorrected points here and, uh, and look at those. And uh, yeah, you know, it does a reasonably good job, right? Um, looks sort of similar to, to what we had with the uh, uh, with the other ones. Okay, so two options: processing, post-processing with your local base station, which I think is usually the desirable way to go, or short of doing that, you can post-process with your cores uh, reference station uh, data. So hopefully, this is useful to you and. Uh, gives you a uh, little bit of uh, insight and experience into how to post-process your GNSS data. Mm -hmm.